In 2014, it was alleged that certain artifacts thought to be stolen by a famous Egyptian scientist named Zahi Hawass, the then Minister of Antiquities, were discovered. This accusation has cast a large shadow over the reputation of Hawass, who had made significant contributions to the discovery of many archaeological treasures. On the other hand, some suspect that there might be efforts to discredit certain individuals, as has always happened in history. Continuing, the Great Pyramid of Giza is indeed a fascinating place. It contained copper wires even before electricity was discovered, which is perplexing. Some suggest that Zahi Hawass wanted to hide something from the public, leading to rumors about the theft of these artifacts. Some historians do not believe the pyramids were simply tombs of the Egyptian pharaohs and suggest that they might have been built by an even more ancient civilization. Elon Musk once made a sensational claim on Twitter that the pyramids might have been built by aliens and that the Great Pyramid in particular contained so many anomalies that the question of who built them remains an enigma. These structures, or buildings, are generally mysterious. The Great Pyramid, seemingly alien from the start due to its enormous size, is believed to have been constructed over a 20-year period with a workforce of 20,000, transporting over 2 million stone blocks to the site, a feat that seems nearly impossible. Unlike other pyramids, it does not resemble a tomb and stands with all its glory and insoluble mystery. When you visit Giza, one of Egypt's most popular cities, guides will offer you a wealth of information, including complex details about the history of a grand emirate. However, if you pay close attention, you will realize that everything is beyond our comprehension. For instance, were you aware that the pyramids were once white? Egyptian scholars claim that the polished white limestone casing made the pyramid gleam in the sun. Yet, the most exciting part was its tip, once covered in pure gold to reflect the sun's rays, not only dazzling the eyes, but also displaying the empire's opulence. Over time, it was believed that a wealthy pharaoh's tomb was inside. Even though the tomb of the great emir was not finished, the structure has somewhat sunk, and its height has decreased compared to ancient times. Now, although just over 130 meters tall, it still captures attention with its size. Before the construction of the Eiffel Tower, the Great Pyramid was considered the tallest structure in the world. As the mysteries of the pyramid are uncovered, the importance and value of this site have increased worldwide. On the other side, the Serapium of Saqqara, an ancient Egyptian temple, was made from the same material, hard granite. Twenty large sarcophagi with beautiful decorations were found in recent times, and these sarcophagi continue to amaze people with their grandeur, the smoothness of their lines and edges, and their size. The sarcophagi were quite large and were brought to their locations with great difficulty. The official institutional statement about what's inside them says that they once contained bulls that were considered sacred. Even if we assumed that these sarcophagi held bulls, how could they be more grandiose, larger, and more ornate than the rooms of the pharaohs? Finding the answer to this question is quite challenging, but let's pause the video here. On their tablets, certain figures are frequently drawn, half of which are depicted as human and the other half as bull, indicating the minotaur-like creatures. If such beings, considered half-human, half-bull and sacred, really existed, then the official statement might seem misleading at first glance, but could actually be partially correct. If we take the Sumerian tablets as a reference, it seems plausible that the gigantic sarcophagi once contained mummies of these half-bull, half-human entities. Let's continue, dear friends. The tomb of the Egyptian ruler needs to look incredible. However, it's also worth mentioning that this sarcophagus is peculiar because even though there's a granite box resembling this laid, no pharaoh's body has come out of it, nor any valuables or worthless items associated with a pharaoh have been found. Therefore, it's very beneficial to investigate this. Egyptian scientists are certain that it's a big granite box believed to be the pharaoh's sarcophagus. There are significant differences between this and the sarcophagi found in the pharaoh's room and the Serapium temple, supporting the theory we just proposed. The room referred to as the king's chamber also has a special acoustic design. It's strange to think that builders would create such an effect for a room meant to hold a body for centuries. As you continue to explore and examine the Giza pyramid, you'll notice different nuances, such as why the pyramids have tunnels leading deep underground. 
You may ask your guide during the tour, but you'll find they have no answer because there are still undiscovered areas beneath the pyramid. Although scientists continue to research, they know that massive structures await discovery. Researchers claim to have found underground water filling a large void beneath the surface. Another unexplained nuance is the mysterious void inside the tomb, discovered using muon radiography. Imagine that scientists speculate this void served as a ramp for moving blocks during construction and was poorly filled when the tomb was finished. The hasty theory full of absurdities is often dismissed. On the other hand, it is believed that the Great Pyramid was constructed in 20 years and many imperfections were left inside as if the builders were rushing, causing unusual effects according to some Egyptologists. I'm looking forward to more logical and informed theories from Egyptologists, scientists, and researchers about the slave and construction system of that era. It should be noted that no action or person capable of entertaining such thoughts could be introduced into that system. Accidentally or through malice, some people might have stolen significant artifacts, and maybe Egyptian scientists believe that the public shouldn't know too much about the great pharaoh's tomb. Perhaps some of you might think it's all just a coincidence, but it's worth noting that there was no room for coincidence in those times, especially in such structures. Coincidence can actually be logically explained. The pyramid was indeed once covered with polished white limestone, making the structure smooth with flawless edges. But all this was not for beauty's sake, of course, but necessary to reflect the sunlight. It acted like a mirror, reflecting the sun's rays perfectly into the pyramid, isolating sunlight in an ideal manner. What's interesting is that it's made of dolomite and granite, which is odd because granite is one of the hardest stones in the world and takes 10 days to process, much longer than the readily available limestone nearby. Transporting granite by boat from a quarry in Aswan, located 800 kilometers away from the construction site, raises the question of why such a complex material was chosen for what seems to be just an ordinary tomb. It's also worth mentioning that granite emits a slight radiation and, most importantly, is a good piezoelectric conductor. Using crystals from that era, an increased electrical conductivity is noticed, while the pyramid's gold could have created a conductive path for energy directed upwards. Moreover, it's situated on strong natural generators like underground rivers, making water an excellent source. Independent researchers have long understood what these hypotheses lead to, and you can find many videos on our channel that expose similar topics with some linked in the description. Make sure to watch them, dear friends. The Great Pyramid does not contain the pharaoh's body, nor any artifacts or accessories for the ruler's burial because it was not a tomb. It's beneficial to state that it was an old power plant producing wireless electricity, which could work simultaneously with the pyramids and the nearby lake structures, potentially being a giant prototype of modern batteries. Some theorists and Egyptologists suggest this because all the boxes were made from the same radioactive conductive materials. The strange findings inside the pyramid structure suggest that what was considered a tomb might indeed be an electric power plant with electromagnetic emissions during an electrical storm akin to energy collection. This points to the production of electricity used for something within the structure's base, which can be transmitted to any desired location using only copper wires. Some researchers believe that the copper wires, purportedly stolen by the voice of waste from the pyramid, could have been used for this purpose. On the other hand, Egyptologists claim that, after all, the pyramids were never finished, so their function as power plants seems unlikely, or they could be wrong. English engineer Christopher observed strange cracks and darkening in some pyramid ceilings. Although it's clear these could be from torches used for illumination, it's also possible that they resulted from something else, such as an earthquake that could have damaged the pyramid at one time. The position of the seismic center should be closer to the base of the pyramid, yet no significant damage is visible, suggesting the cracks in the beams could be due to an internal explosion. The present brown color of the pharaoh's granite, which is no longer its original pink hue, could have changed due to an explosion or high electrical activity, indicating a strong energy formation occurred years ago, potentially causing the beams and walls to crack. This could be achieved by transforming acoustic energy into kinetic energy over long distances. Imagine a singer shattering a glass with their voice when the frequencies match, 
turning acoustic energy kinetic. Wireless electricity transmission through solid materials over large distances was unveiled by a famous physicist in the late 19th century. You know who he is. None other than the engineer Nikola Tesla claimed he could change the world. In 1905, he envisioned a two-pole, massive, boundless energy tower, a concept constantly on his mind, which amused other physicists. Tesla's discoveries were contrary to the knowledge of the time, but that never stopped him. His next source of infinite electricity was the ionosphere, the upper layer of the Earth's atmosphere, which he believed could be harnessed for electricity easily. Scientists considered this a comedic notion, while Tesla started working on building a suitable station to prove his point. Nikola Tesla's discoveries were contrary to the scientists of his time. But this did not stop him. He began to carry out his next project of an infinite source of electricity. This was called the Electromagnetic Pyramid Tower, which uniquely possessed a truth. In fact, Nikola Tesla saw a great implication and had decoded the logic of the pyramid. The issue was that the pyramid was perfectly aligned to the main point with only a three angular minute deviation. This alignment is so information rich that it needs to be understood. The Paris Observatory is worth mentioning today as the most accurately oriented structure to the north and it deviates from true north by only six angular minutes. This is astonishing because the ancient Egyptians did not even have compasses. So, where did they acquire this accumulation of knowledge? When scientists measured the pyramid's perimeter with its height, they arrived at a shockingly accurate conclusion that suggested the structure's size and position could not have been due to chance. The pyramid resonates at a frequency of 8.1, and after many calculations and discoveries, Tesla found that our planet resonates at the same frequency. Tesla calculated the location of his station based on the pyramid's laws, considering the planet's elliptical orbit and the ratio with the equator. The presence of subcurrents beneath the tower, as was the case with the Great Pyramid, was also significant. He found a similar location on the east coast of Colorado Springs and started his experiment there, beginning to build the station like a pyramid. He used copper wires and had a metal coil on top that could create a short-range magnetic field. He also planned to transmit the station's electricity not through wires, but in waves, similar to modern Wi-Fi. Essentially, Tesla wanted to create something like a transformer that would work with the conductive layer between the Earth and the ionosphere. If we consider what he intended to send, we can catch glimpses of some assumptions in Egypt. The obelisks, with their tops potentially acting as receivers, indicate that the Egyptians created 28 obelisks, called ambulates. However, for some reason, similar stones are found in Istanbul, Rome, London, Paris, and New York, suggesting the possibility of a wireless electric power plant being used in prehistoric times, and this method, only recently discussed by scientists, was almost a century ago applied by the great inventor Nikola Tesla. Unfortunately, Tesla did not have 20,000 workers or the significant amount of money needed for labor and materials, which, among other reasons, hindered scientists' work and tired patrons waiting for the promised scientific breakthrough, leading to the withdrawal of sponsorship and the project's closure. Perhaps it was intentionally closed down. But if Tesla had been successful, our ancestors in the 19th century could have been using electric vehicles smoothly. Today, modern electric cars are far from perfect, expensive, and time-consuming to charge, with only a few fast charging stations available and long lines of people waiting to charge their vehicles. Moreover, it's worth considering how much harm is done to nature to produce these heavily charged electric batteries and where these batteries will eventually be disposed of. Scientists couldn't crack the secret of Tesla's tower, hence they struggled with the development of magnetized concrete roads for charging electric vehicles while driving. Tesla wanted to disclose his invention to the public but failed so far. Nevertheless, his plan was ready and he had completed the first phase of the project. In fact, he planned to make wave frequencies work like a signal that needs a synchronized resonator with a directive code, like a lock and key mechanism between the transmitter and the receiver. Though simple today, this concept was essentially based on the foundations laid in Tesla's time, where people would have been able to transmit voice signals, newspaper articles, and even photographs over long distances, 
which means Tesla almost succeeded in creating a prototype of today's internet. If Nikola Tesla's plans had worked, we would have forever been freed from numerous chargers and cables. People might have been using electricity for free if Tesla's vision had been realized. It's fascinating to learn how a wireless electric power station might have been used in ancient Egypt. During excavations and research of the Egyptian pyramids, archaeologists did not find any ancient devices that would have required electricity. However, they found very strange hieroglyphs in the Temple of Hathor in Dendera City. Some interpret this imagery as an analogy to a modern light bulb. If so, it would appear that the Egyptians might have used electricity as early as 2250 BC. It may very well have been actual electric technology, helping them build large-scale structures without consuming human labor, possibly using electric lighting to facilitate night work for the slave workforce, or maybe even using it in a way that would make the ruling pharaohs seem godlike to the people. And that wraps up another episode on Mysterious Discoveries. If you've enjoyed delving into the enigmatic and untold stories with us, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Your thirst for the unknown drives us to unearth more secrets and share them right here with you. Before you go, drop a comment below and let us know what mysteries you want us to explore next. Remember, the world is filled with wonders waiting to be discovered, and together, we'll unveil them one mystery at a time. Until our next adventure, keep the curiosity alive and never stop seeking the truth. This is Mysterious Discoveries, signing off. Stay mysterious.